I'm going to take the glasses off because the light is just shining right in my eyes. Just as this starts, people start honking right out oh, front. Yeah. I don't know whether you guys can hear that or not. This is Marketing Moms. I'm Ann Brennan. And I'm Anastasia Van Greshepi. And we've been away a while. I was just thinking that. I was like, man, it's been a really long time. We have. We took the summer off. We took the summer off. Yeah. And actually, it was good. It was good. It was unintended. I mean, we were planning on we were recording, but we just... The truth is, yeah, truth is, at some point, I called Amanda and I said, I mean, by the way, we have the best producer. Mm -hmm. She is in high school. I think she's in her oh, senior she, year now. Oh, I thought yeah. she graduated. No, she's in her senior oh, year. Um, and she does all of this. And I called her and I'm like, I just want you to run reruns until I tell you not to. Um, because the truth is, we had a lot going on this summer, mm -hmm. a whole lot going on this mm -hmm. summer. Um, but I have, let's start with Aluna. I, I have to keep my glasses on or I can't see the banners over here. So let's start with the Lunar Report, and then I'm going to talk about what's happening with burgers and bands before we really oh, jump into yeah. things, because there's some really cool stuff happening. Uh, the Lunar Report. So I took Luna to the vet this morning. Oh. And uh, so here's, so we've talked about our Great Dane on here before, and my Great Dane, and she is a mess, a huge mess. But over the summer, I took her to daycare, not daycare, at the kennel. She was there for a week, and I came back, and my all- Silver Great Dane mm. had a great big dark spot, like dark gray spot on her back. And I was like, well, that's it's like her whole back. Like she was yeah. Back. Well, at the time it was only oh, a small, yeah, yeah. like it was kind of small. And I thought, well, they did bathe her. So maybe she's still wet. Yeah. Right. Well, it didn't go away. And I went, I'm like, did you bathe her with something different? They said, no. Well, then it started spreading. And so she's, it, it's a long, dark spot. And then she started getting little spots. She's polka dot now. She's yeah. like, um, so I took her to the vet, um, which is, everything's fine. I actually was pretty sure it was fine. But, but you know, you have to, you have to check. Um, but what I, why I am telling you this is that when I got her there today, they, first of all, they love her to bits. Yeah. But secondly, they weighed her, and I thought it wasn't that bad. They're like, she's 127 pounds at 11 and a half months. That's not so bad. Apparently, she's huge. Um, when you look at the growth chart, she's way above. Oh, wait a minute. So she's supposed to still grow? She's going to still grow for another six months. That's what he said. <laughs> Right. He is definitely full grown. He's not growing anymore. And when I was there at your house last week, like it was, they're pretty similar in size. Yeah. Yeah. They're pretty similar. So she's going to be really big. Um, and she doesn't look, I mean, they didn't say she was overweight, did they? Oh, no. She's like, actually, she's, she's thin. Yeah. She's so actually I was, thin I was right like, now. I'm like, there's no way that she is overweight. I no. mean, I've seen dogs, and there have been people that I've told, I'm like, your dog needs to lose some weight. My cousin. I went to her house and I and I dog shamed them. <laughs> I yeah, like, you fat shamed their dog. Because, That's mean. because the dog is a lab <laughs> and it was a little older. And I was like, this is actually really bad. Like it was really, really overweight. Yeah, and I'm like, it's really bad for their joints. Um, so you you know, we have a lab, we've had we've always had labs, and so I'm like, it's really bad for them. And and the thing about labs is they don't know when to stop, so right. they just will eat and eat and eat and eat. We, you know, it's like a science in our house with our dogs yeah. and what we're feeding them. So, all right. Well, we're going to talk to you. We are today going to talk about marketing deer in a down economy, which I think is a really good subject. And I think it's something that we, we want to talk about. But before we talk about it, I want to go back to burgers and vans because we've talked about burgers and vans for suicide prevention on the show before. Mm -hmm. We generally have an event in May. We used to have one in October um, and we stopped we decided this year we're going to stop doing it because quite honestly, trying to run an agency and run a charity is hard it's really really hard and it was yeah. so stressful it was probably not good for our mental health no definitely um, yeah i mean it was it's sad because we had we did it for two years um one pre-covid one post-covid neither you know the first one poured torrential oh, down the second one um was nice but it just we didn't get as many people out and it it doesn't have anything to do with it it was just too much like it was just too i much. think that you you know, we talk about, you know, I think it's very timely right now um, to be talking about mental health. You know, kids are going back to school, things that you need to be looking out for. You need, you need to kind of keep an eye on your kids. But we needed to keep an eye on ourselves. Yes, And absolutely. we just couldn't. And, and any moms listening to this, any parents, you, yes. 
that it's really important. We still we worry so much about our kids and we forget that our mental health is important as well. So, yeah, that's a reminder for you. But I want to tell you what is going on because it's kind of neat. We were like, we're not going to do one in October. Um, and then we get a call and it's a long story about how we got the call, except that it's a running store in Annapolis. The, but the person who is managing that store used to work for a, another running store that we were managing their mm-hmm. social media. Um, and then when that bus- that went out of business, for lack of a better term, there's a whole long story about what happened there. And we won't we'll talk about that. <laughs> but when that went out of business, um, he moved over to Charm City Run in Annapolis. And his name's Bill. And he called me and he said, hey, Ann, I want to do this event for you. And I thought, cool, we'll probably do a 5K or a fun run or something. Mm -hmm. And that's what I told you. Yes, that is what you told me. She told me it was a 5K. Um, And then I got on the phone with them and they said, hey, uh, we've got Annapolis Town Center on the phone with us because that's where they're located. And they are building an amphitheater and they want Burgers and Bands to be the first event there. And so now we're having a much bigger, it's only two hours though. I think two hours is going to, you know, we usually go, what, eight? hours at least yeah eight to nine it's, yeah mm-hmm. eight to nine hours it's a long day and we're this there is, like 12 but. <laughs> exactly and this is only two hours it's only gonna have a few bands it's gonna be great though and it's but what amazes me actually i'll tell you the second part of the story which is so that happened we're really excited and then somebody who is really nearby saw that it's on a thursday evening and she runs um uh, Julia Southern, Southern Kitchen, and she usually has music on Thursday nights and said, no, this is too good of a cause. I'm not going to have music because I don't want to take away from Burgers and Bands. And I just thought that was amazing. It's so sweet. I mean, they're, she's right there, and she just was like, I'm not going to, I'm going to send people over. When they ask about the music, I'm going to send people over to your event. And yeah. It was. It's and then she, sweet. and now she's hosting it. Yeah, now we're going to do something there. Yeah, actually, actually we're just, I ran into Jasmine at church yesterday, and I was telling them because we used to do it at my church at the, and uh, the Greek Church in Annapolis, and the Annapolis event was there, and um, I was like, we didn't pursue this. They came and asked us, and she was just so happy that we were able to do something. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it's really neat because it, it is like Burgers and Bands has a life of its own mm-hmm. and it's doing exactly what we wanted it to do, which yeah. is to open up the conversation in the community and help people to see that you can, um, we can talk about mental health. Yes. In, a, in a positive way, right? All right, we're going to move on. I want to remind you, please subscribe over at YouTube. I'm going to keep the banner running across the bottom, but it's youtube.com slash Brendan and Annie, which probably should change that to ASMM Digital, <laughs> but it's Brendan and Annie. That's what it is. You can ask questions. If you ask questions in the comments, we will sometimes see them while we're live. Sometimes we will not. Sometimes we'll see them when this, this goes up. So uh, we, but we will always, no matter what, answer them. So if you have questions, ask us if it's actually some of these things that we do become a show um, because you ask us a question that we're like, that's a whole show. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. I also want to, and I didn't put this up there, but I want to tell you that we're doing a class. I'm really oh, excited yeah. about this. Uh, people have asked me for a long time. They call and I say, hey, can you do our digital marketing for us and then they tell me their budget and it's really low and i and it's we can't do that um and so we've tried all kinds of solutions for helping and usually we get free advice pretty readily and i you know always willing to do that but i wanted something more and so we had been training somebody in our office uh on digital marketing and basically we had a plan this is how you train somebody to do exactly what we do Mm -hmm. and so we created instead a class, an eight-week intensive, one hour a week plus a uh, cl- a um, office hours hour on Fridays. So Mondays from eight until nine, we're going to have the class, and then from uh, noon until one, we're going to have office hours on Friday. And the idea is, we're going to walk you through creating long-form content like blogs and emails and um, white papers, things like that. We're going to walk you through that part, then taking those and repurposing them and how to create the graphics and how to put them into a scheduler and how to look at your analytics and how to make sure you're engaging your audience and how to encourage engagement. All of that. It is a I I keep saying if you are lazy, this is not the course for you. If you are a badass entrepreneur who wants to learn a lot, 
this is the course for you. You're going to want to take this course. Uh, it is very, very good. It's $9.99. Mm -hmm. so, we don't have many spots left. So. Right, exactly. Uh, we're not going to take a whole lot because people said, how are you going to record it? I'm not going to record it. It's going to be live. And the reason is that when I do these classes, I do classes sort of like this sometimes for the Better Business Bureau, much smaller. Uh, but I do the classes for them. And when I do it, I generally, what becomes the thing that people like is that I let you ask questions during the middle of it about your business. How does this apply to your business? And so I don't think it's fair for people to be able to be put on the spot telling this about their business and then putting it out there for the public. I don't want to do that. I don't like the idea at no, all. No. Um, and I think it benefits you to be in the room getting those answers. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're interested, go to asmmdigital.com and then you'll see digital marketing course and go ahead and sign up there. Do it quickly. It starts September 12th and it's going to be a great class. And this intro has been so long, so I'm <laughs> so sorry. We will not do that again next week, but there was so much to catch up on. Um, so we're going to talk about marketing during the down economy. Yes. So, and it is definitely a down economy. We're seeing it from everybody. We're hearing from everybody about how, how hard it's been. Yeah. And, and clients that I wasn't expecting to hear it from too. Yeah. yeah. I think that it's, it's everywhere. It is truly amazing how, well, I think everybody's scared. I was thinking about it. I mean, it's, it's what you're looking at. I mean, maybe this would be bad anyway, because the inflation is so bad. Right. But I think, a lot of people who were survived, who survived COVID and might have survived this, it's having them back to back. Mm -hmm. It's having COVID and all those years, you know, two years of just pure crap for a lot of businesses. Yeah. And then you throw the economy, the, the, you know, the inflation at it right now. And it's scaring people. But, but I want to encourage you to not get scared, first of all, to realize that if you're an entrepreneur, you have... You know, gosh, this is going to get a this is going to get an explicit rating. Um, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you got more balls than the next guy. If you're an entrepreneur, you really do. You can you can you got more balls. You can handle this, and I I know you do. And and I'm going to have to clean up my language at some point, but not today. Today's not the day. Um, so I want to talk to you about why you want to keep marketing, and I want to give you some advice on how to do that. Um, so first of all, remind this by marketing, you can remind people of your value. And we've said before, what's my favorite thing to say to people? Everybody's forgettable. We're all forgettable. All of us. All of us. So don't, don't stop marketing because the truth is people will forget you. It's very easy for them to do that. So don't stop marketing because you're forgetful. You know, well, you're, you're, forgettable. Well, you're forgettable, especially when your competitor isn't, hasn't stopped marketing. Exactly. You know, we talked about this, a client of ours um, called when COVID hit, I'm going to pause. And then a week later, he said, no, restart everything because his competitors were. were well, and that's so. actually one of the things we're going to talk about. So the first reason is to remind people of your of your value. You want to make sure they know what you do and why you do it. This is a really important time to use your marketing to talk about pain points. What is causing pain for your customers? Um, we just had a great meeting on Friday with a um, hormone replacement therapy company. And he... Um, He's like, I don't think marketing is really good for me. I, and I was like, oh, sweetie. <laughs> oh, sweetie. Let's talk about this because um, we, we've talked about it on the show. I've actually, you guys have watched me literally on air have hot flashes. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I'm like, these are all the things that bother me because of menopause. And I didn't know until I met Jennifer Galarson, mm -hmm. I did not know that you could fix this. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. I thought I had to live with a lot of what I was going through. And, you know, so if you can show your value, if you can talk about those pain points, what are you going to do to make my hot flashes stop, right? Well, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's figuring out what the pain point for your customer or client is and then showing them how you're fixing that. Right. You know, so we at ASMM offer people time. It's not because what we do is impossible for anybody else to do. That's why we're having you know, class. It is impossible it. for us to do surgery on ourselves. On you know, for so a doctor has that value on their own because they've gotten the education or a lawyer. Like people that are professionals on that regard, granted, you know, there is a lot of marketing experience that we have that the average person doesn't have. 
to take it to a different level. But a lot of what we do, and we're doing this class to teach people how to do it. Right. So that that way they can go and do it on their own. But we give people time back. That's the biggest So thing, that right? the entrepreneur doesn't have to spend their weekend doing their marketing and they can go and live their life. That exactly. is our pain point. So when you're thinking about your business, think about your client or your customer and your product. When we say pain points, we've said this a million times. It is not your pain point as an entrepreneur. <laughs> It is your that was my favorite. Yes. I did a class, and um, I won't even talk about what class it was, but I did a class, and uh, the person on the other end was talking about pain points, and they asked somebody in the audience, and he says, "Well, it's it's what's in my pot, my wallet. My pain point is my wallet. I want them. I want more customers, so I get more business and then yeah. more money." And I was like, "That's not your pain point, buddy." But, but uh, <laughs> you so, know, what are really you important. fixing? So that's that's what you, how you remind people. Exactly. What are they? What is their pain point? How are you addressing that pain? Point? Exactly. So remind them of your value and tell them why it's important that they come to you. What makes you different? And actually, that's really important. One of the things that we talk about a lot is branding. You have to understand your brand. I'll, you have to understand mm -hmm. your brand. If you don't understand your brand, you are not going to be able to tell them why they should come to you. And most people don't really get their brand. They really yeah. don't. So, um, all right. This is exactly what Anastasia was Sorry, talking about. Sorry, I didn't read this yeah. <laughs> Your most successful competitor is not cutting their marketing. Um, and that's actually exactly what I was going to talk about was that uh, a lot of people during COVID started to cut and then realized, oh, my God, if I cut and they don't cut, he's they are going to get the business and I'm not. Yeah. Right. And our clients were brilliant yes. because it only happened one client for a week for a week and then he came right back and exactly. came right back and it was amazing to me because you know i graduated from college with my marketing degree and moved to the states after the dot you know the dot coms had crashed and um nobody was hiring and the place they weren't hiring the most was marketing because they're like you know that's the first place they're going to cut out of the budget but that's the place you shouldn't be cutting because how are you going to grow your business without marketing your business? Right. Or how are you going to even, even if you, even if you think I'm not going to grow, I'm not going to be able to grow. Well, how are you going to stay open? Mm -hmm. Honestly, how are you going to stay open? Because there's always attrition. There's always attrition. People will leave. You've got to keep replacing the customers who do leave, right? Because every, it does, you know, just talking to, you know, not to get political, um, but I was talking about how people acted like Ron Reagan was so, stupid mm -hmm. they acted like he was an idiot but he you know his trickle down in economics was not stupid it was you know the idea is you know what happens to one person is going to go through so you have to be you have to be on top of, of it as a business owner mm -hmm. to keep your business going because people are going to leave they just will but if you want more to come behind them you've got to keep you've got to keep marketing keep marketing yeah because you are forgettable, mm -hmm. right? Go right back to it. You are forgettable. Um, all right. This, show them your stability. This is a power move, right? Show people that I'm not affected. My business is going great, mm -hmm. right? Show them that you're not affected. Show them that you're still going strong. Show them that your business is still doing well. And one of the things, one of the ways you can do this is by featuring some of your customers, right? Mm -hmm. Feature some of your customers. Show what they're doing. Show what you're building for them, especially if you're a business to business. Think about that. Yeah, we just, we got a sign coming, hopefully soon. Yes. So hopefully soon. I have a drop. Um, and if he and if if our sign company is smart because he's not a client, but if he's smart, he'll take pictures and he'll put it on his social media, mm -hmm. and he'll highlight the fact that hey, this business is is going and thriving, right? And by the way, they're thriving, and so am I because I just put up their sign, mm -hmm. right? So think about things like that. What can you do to show people how well you are still doing? Because success begets success, right? Definitely. So, um, also market smarter. Think about what you're doing. Mar market in a way that makes sense for you. So these things we're telling you, like like that. Feature your customers. Well, what, one of the reasons you want to feature your customers. You want to. What, what's the biggest? It's we're always talking about being more human, right? right. And right. when you show your customers, you're being more human. You're being relatable. You're the pe the person looking at your post may be the same person, you know, not exactly the same person with the same name, the same address, but maybe it's a, you know, I am a 42 year old mother of three children and you put me on there and there's another woman in her, you know, late thirties, early forties, 
with three kids and it's like oh that's me you know and it's not it's a subconscious thing it's like oh if this is good enough for her maybe it's good enough for me so i think that there's you know that's exactly and then from a digital marketing standpoint you've got you you know you're tagging especially with your b2b clients yeah you're tagging their business which means their customers are also going to see you yeah right or if there's an influence or if the person that comes to your store or whatever you can see that they if you know them and they have a quite the following they could be an influencer exactly. a micro influencer. I, well i'll tell you a lot of times i'll go into a store and if they, if they tell me they're struggling i say well let's do something together because my twitter following is pretty darn big i'm like yeah. take advantage of it i don't care mm-hmm. take advantage of it i'd love to help you out right so tag me uh i do care if you t- tag me and you have nothing to do with my business and especially if you tag me on things that are things i disagree with i've yeah. had people um tag me on supplements and things that i'm That's like amazing. oh no 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 I've, I've had them tag me on um a jewel that i'm like oh. Dude, no 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 <laughs> don't do that no, no, no. um all right market for impression so one of the things we hear a lot is that people are these days so worried they're like i'm not getting more likes i'm not getting more uh likes or comments on my my um instagram or my facebook i'm not getting the the likes that i'd like like uh the thing is that things have changed so nobody's getting them nobody's getting them because people have changed the way that they're they're doing social media Mm -hmm. so you're not going to get as many likes as you used to and that's okay because what you need to do is start marketing for impressions and one of the ways you can do that is to do more videos do more videos specifically do more reels do more TikToks, do more things where you are real put yourself in front of the camera and I'm just going to say it, suck it up, buttercup. I know you don't like to be in front of the camera. I hate myself on camera. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. But I'm here. And I'm here because I know people want to know me. They want to know Anastasia. They want to know us. And at one of the reasons, why do we do that? You know, let's go back to the top of the hour mm-hmm. <laughs> where we talk about ourselves and we talk about Luna. I'm going to just kind of do going in circles today, man, because I, yeah. I this, some of this does run back. Why do we do that? It's so that people, so that we're human, so that people are like, oh, these ladies are crazy. Let's tune in and see what they have to say. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And you know, it's funny. My friend, I was at the pool last week with my kids, and my friend was like, I, she's a teacher, and she has no idea about any of this marketing stuff, but she, I hadn't seen her for quite some time. And she was like, I was watching your video the other day and I realized that I had no idea what the heck you were talking about, but I just wanted to hear your voice. And I was like, <laughs> oh. she's like, I missed you. And I was oh, like, oh, that's sweet. I'm like, and that's what it is, right? My friend, that's how real this is. My friend thought that by watching our video, she was having a conversation with me. Right. You know, so, I mean, we are, this is exactly who we are. Exactly. A little less makeup. If I'm not yes. following that. <laughs> well, I don't even know. I rode, uh, I, you should have seen, I rode in the Luna today. So I'm covered in drool from front to back, man. Um, <laughs> it's disgusting because I rode the top down. So it oh. flies around. <laughs> it's just gross. At least she's um, not in front of you. Exactly. Like. All right. And finally, I want to talk about the last way, one of the last ways during this time that you can market smarter. And that's to educate your customers. Mm-hmm. Give them things. Don't just, don't be selfish. And, and, you know, when I say that, I really do mean it. So I'll have customers, you know, I'll have people come to me and they'll say, you know what I want to do? I want to have a blog, but I'm going to write it myself. Mm -hmm. And then they write it themselves. And what they talk about is how awesome they are. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to hear how awesome you are. Yes, you can tell them in a subtle way, but the whole blog should not be about how awesome you are. The blog should give them something. So if you, you know, we can go back to the hormone therapy Mm -hmm. right if you did a blog this is this is actually why the class works so well because when you're taking the class I'm gonna give you ideas of things you could write it's true right so if you are a hormone therapist and you are looking for blog ideas then you could do a blog all about the things that people don't realize are related to menopause Mm -hmm. so we talked about it the other day we talked about the fact that your spatial relations are wrong so Mm -hmm. people who are going through menopause are sometimes klutzy they run into doors right run into the door jam or they're itchy or they're whatever it is so there could be you just give those examples and explain what might cause that why is this and why will hormone therapy help so you're still leading them back to the idea that hey by the way we do hormone therapy yeah but you're explaining to them something that they're like they're sitting there going 
that happens to me, mm-hmm. right? I think that's the case in everything, right? Like, yeah. I, I mean, I we do a lot of blogs. I like to read them. I like to know. It's amazing how much we know about chimneys. Oh my god! And plumbing, and and car mechanics, and mortgages, like all kinds of things. And the oh, reason yeah. is because we're you know educate because our purpose when we're writing content for our clients, real estate, is to educate their customers. Exactly. So we educate ourselves so that we can educate so that what we're writing is educational because people, we've talked about it. It's not take, take, take. It's give, 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 and then maybe take. Exactly. You know, or ask, not take, ask. Ask, So, exactly. you know, I think that that's something that you need to, it's important to educate your customers because then it builds that credibility. It builds yourself as a expert and then people are more likely to trust you. Absolutely. And that is, that's, you know, let's, you know, we've talked about this before, but I'm going to say it again, that you being an expert in your field, you are expert in your field. Most of us feel like we're, you know, we're an imposter of some sort. Most Mm -hmm. people do, Uh, but we're not, we own the business. We are doing the thing that we are best at. So show people that be the expert in your field. And I wanted to say, actually, a lot of people will call me and they're like, I don't think you could write a blog from what I do. Um, one of the benefits of working with us, you said time that, Mm -hmm. yeah, but that time is huge. But one of the other benefits is just that we have ideas and Mm -hmm. ideas to me, they come, we, I felt like they come easy, Um, but, but they don't come easily to everybody. And so, you know, I'll, I'm going to give you another good idea. If you're a real estate agent, we have a real estate agent that, that is here in Annapolis, Jen Shaw. She's wonderful. And her blog is nothing about her. It's all about Annapolis. It's all mm-hmm. about uh, the best restaurants in Annapolis, the schools. best ice cream places, mm-hmm. the best schools, the best dentists. And that draws people to her website. And then she can enter, you know, she can show them, she can put listings on there so that they can see what she's got available. So it's really not, it, 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 it's not as hard as it seems. So if you think you can't, if you just want to call us and say, I have this crazy business and this is what I do what how would I educate my customers we'll give you some ideas because there are so many things that we have going on on our head all the time this is what we do all day long right right. we're not this isn't pivoting we might be pivoting in terms of what we're creating and for what industry we're creating but at the end of the day this is what we do all day long exactly and sometimes when we're dreaming (laughs) (laughs) yeah exactly i wake up in the morning with an idea and you know i have a notepad next to my bed because i'm like oh we could do this for this client you know it doesn't matter it it, we it never turns off unfortunately (laughs) well you know i was buying shoes at a shoe store in um bethesda yesterday and by the way i have walked by like literally walked by the shoe store probably 70 times in the past two years never saw it oh i didn't even know it was there i it was right there their sign is horrible they're everything like but it's like a hole in the wall shoe Mm. store and I couldn't help myself. I had to give them advice. Of course you did. It's impossible for you not to. (laughs) (laughs) So I gave them advice. and um, I do that too. Yeah, because I can't help it. Remember I was driving through uh, Philadelphia and I saw (laughs) a sign on the side of a building and I, Athena was with me and I was like, take a photo of that right now. And I sent it to Ian because it was a law office. And it looked, the signage looked like a coffee shop. And so, actually, did I send you the logo for, so, for Maman? I don't think so. Oh, my gosh. So, I've sent everybody I know this logo. Oh. Because I think it's the worst logo I've ever seen. It's a great little French bistro. Oh, okay. Uh, it's lovely. But it's the worst logo I have ever seen. Mm. And it's a chain now. Like they have one in New York, they have one in Bethesda, they have one, like, different places. Worst logo. Maybe, you know what, though? That could be the thing. I don't think it is. It's supposed to say Momo. It looks like mountains. Oh, you know what? You did send it to me. It's yeah. really bad. Yeah, it's, it's very, like very a, bad. It's like a signature of somebody that has a name starting with M. It's really bad. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's that's us going off on our tangent because the truth is 
we think marketing all the time. Oh, we do love it. Um, I do want to remind you that over on the blog, there is a lot of information. We took a break from the podcast. We did we not did take not a blog a blog break. The no. blog ha- gets a new blog up there every Monday. So if you've not visited in a while, you are going to want to go back, asmmdigital.com yes. slash blog. Uh, today, actually, the article that went up Monday was about diversity and why diversity is good for your business. And I also... On that note, I want to remind you, if you are a woman owned business or a black owned business or um, a um, any business along those lines, um, you should go on Google My Business and you should say that you should you could use that as an attribute. Say that, hey, I am a black owned business or I am a woman owned business or I'm a veteran owned business. It does make a difference. The blog is really helpful. Go look at it. I think you'll you'll like it. Um, and I think that's it. Do you have anything else that we should tell these fine folks? I don't know. We wish everybody a good school year. Ooh, if you have school age children, up. Labor Day is coming up. Um, yeah. But yeah, catch up on the blog. The blog's great. And you know, it's really fun. I forgot how much fun we have doing this. Oh, I love this. I love this. So we will see you next week. And um, I don't know what we're talking about. Usually I do, but this time yeah, I do so not we're, know. We're still getting, as you can tell, we're still getting back in the swing of things here. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, all right. See you later. Bye-bye.